right, let's get started. Uh, no update on Charter uh, update and placement. Uh, I've been busy with the other stuff. Uh, the, the shining star of the hour, Brian, beta site updates. Okay, um, quite a lot to talk about. So um, I've created a, hang on, let's, which order are we in? So do, yeah. Do the tasks first. Maybe switch okay. these right. Do the tasks first. So I've created um, an issue, which I put a link there. It's two two three, just to list everything we need to do. It's a bit of a fuller list than this one. Um, the first thing I really want to do is just check that we're not going to mess up anything internally with Red Hat. There are a couple of web hooks on the repo that are active so i don't know where they go what they do and as we do things in the repo is it going to upset people and start firing errors or um issues around so i just wanted to be ideally delete know if i can delete them or if i find to be left alone um but then i've got a list of things to do which um again if, if we just quickly look at them i don't think there's anything that's um you can share your screen if you want and just navigate. Uh, Why don't I see if I can do that? That would be great. Uh, share this screen. Yeah. So hopefully you can see that. Uh -huh. And I'll just I can make it a bit bigger, I think. Uh, it's, it's readable. Okay. So so yeah, th these are the these are the steps. The only one that I'm not too sure about is the DNS one. Yeah. Because so I. So just just so you know, I reached out to Will Gordon and Jerry Fallow, who I've at, assigned also to this issue just in the past hour, um, and they are going they are going to repoint the DNS um, for us. Um, but they'll also uh, they'll now review your thing. I don't think any of the webhooks that are in there in the site are going to um, be bothered by what you do. But that's my my opinion, and they put the hooks in there, so I'm gonna double check with them today. Jerry is um, on Czech time. He's in the Czech Republic. Okay. So um, he's, we got him early, hopefully today. So we'll do that. But what my hope is by next Tuesday's meeting, um, we will have resolved and we'll be pointing to the new new site. Okay. So just, just so everyone knows, because we call the repo okd.io, when, um, GitHub Pages creates the site, it uses the org name and then slash and the repo name. So obviously when you just point the browser at that, it thinks that okd.io is a file and it doesn't go and add index or HTML at the end of it. So you end up with a not found. So when we do the redirect to okd.io, I'm hoping but even though it's redirecting here, it'll still go and work. That, that's my concern there. Okay. Um, the way around it is to say okd.io, just put a dash, okd-io, but that means we'll be renaming the repo. And again, I don't know what points to it and what else is going to break if we have to do that. But hopefully, we won't have to do that. And um, yep. everything else, I think I'm pretty okay on. Um, the other thing, I just wanted to take the opportunity to we've got a lot of branches so i was just going to hopefully take the opportunity to just get rid of all of these old branches and tidy them all up as you can see we've got pages of branches so yep. unless anybody has an objection i was just going to just close all the old branches close all the away, old branches and close all the pull requests that relate to the old one yep. so, um yeah so that's that's that and then the other one is the status uh, the, ta the the beta site um so that's all working um we've had a couple of pull requests from the virtual the virtualization subgroup which raise a couple of issues um the first one is uh, they were the, they suggested putting in the exact steps to actually in create the development environment um, if we do that do we need to actually look at all the major linux distros the macos and then the windows 
given that fifty percent of developers are on Windows, the other forty something percent are on Mac, and relatively few tend to be on Linux distros. So it's just, do we have a policy of all instructions should be to cover all developers, or because the, the 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 change request that, that he's actually put. He literally just lists the steps on CentOS, CentOS Stream 8. So these are the instructions on CentOS Stream, but that doesn't cover Ubuntu, um, Debian type things. It doesn't cover Mac OS, and it doesn't cover Windows. So that, that was one question. And well, let's go question by question. So for this one, I know that uh, in some of the other sites that uh, I'm involved with that are sort of repo based, um, there are example issues that people create of, like, uh, you know, just like how there's how to create an issue, there'll be a, a page of how to create a page or an issue of how to create a page, how to run it locally and whatever. There are, theoretically, we could script it for like, the three major OSs, like, uh, but the Linux thing, obviously you're splitting it into, you know, you're gonna have yum app, like, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm torn between writing instructions because then you have to maintain them, creating yep. a script for each, which then again, you have to maintain it, or just giving general which, instructions which is that, which is what's yeah. on the site at the minute. What's on the site at the minute says you need to have um, Node.js installed. You need to have Python, Python, Python 3 installed, assuming that you know how to do that. I've also linked to the Node homepage and the Python homepage. Can I ask, ask a, a naive question? Because yeah. that's what most of my questions are. Um, is this how to build the, the, the make docs version of the site? And if so, does the make docs site itself where make docs lives does it have documentation on how to build make doc sites that we can just link to yeah so I'll, I'll, I'll take you to the documentation where this is is um it is this section here so i need to write the bit about how to use a docker I was hoping we could use Podman machine, but you can't mount a volume on Podman, so it's going to have to be Docker. So I'm going to put the Docker instructions here, but on this site, this is what we've got. So it's install Python, install Node. But it um, is, did, where did you get this content? Did you get it from? So this is also on the um, the MK Doc site. But you. So should we just link to the MK Docs site? Well, the problem is because you've got MK Docs, um, and then you've got these other tools like to do the link checker and the spelling, which isn't on the MK Docs site. Yeah. So the idea is this is the set of instructions that you need to get. I, I got it. Okay. Bottom setup. So it could it, be it, a it, split page where you link to the MK Docs site and then uh, up at the top. And yeah. then provide the specifics for the add-ons yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm just, sorry, Diane. Did I cut you off? What did you? No, no, no. I was. At, um, sorry, I have too many screens open and things flying across them. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, so I mean, if you do these bullet points, you you get a working local environment. Yeah. But the minute um, MK Docs does their next release, and you know it's Python three point something, or you know, yeah, well, I, you actually get it because I've actually put a requirements file in, which has all the the Python okay. stuff in. So by okay. doing a pip install minus r, you're getting MK Docs and the the Markdown extensions. Okay. Um. So the the biggest issue are these two. Because you've got different instructions on various Linux packages, depending on the distro. Obviously, if you're on Mac, you can either go and use the Homebrew, and again, Windows, you can use Chocolatey, or you can go to their site and type the command that they say on the site. 
So I've just pointed you at like Node.js. That's Node.js homepage. Go go install it. <laughs> yeah, I I yeah. I I we have so many other things that are uh, not that this isn't hugely important, but installing make docs and configuring an environment build the docs locally. Um, then you, you know you can put a, a add to the install pipe Python on your on your system based on whatever operating system you're using. I mean, you could add a caveat to that line that you have highlighted there. But um, you know, I, I I don't know what to say other than that. I, otherwise, we're yeah. you know giving a tutorial on make docs. Yeah, yeah. yeah so no, that, that seems sufficient, actually. Uh, the, Brian, the only thing that I, I might say is uh, if there are any version dependencies on Python, you know, like subversions, uh, then you should say that. Otherwise, you don't have to. Yeah, the, the, uh, for Node.js, there's an issue whether or not you go with the long-term support version or the latest and greatest and light your hair on fire version. They both work. So, yeah. I, I like so, the light your hair on fire ver version personally. Yeah, they, they they both work as long as you've as long as you're not back back in in the dark ages. Any modern node works as long as it's Python three. I've actually said Python three, so I know Python two's right. now been not in support, but people still have it about. So I've actually said Python three, and again yeah, I've good. tried multiple versions, and I've, I've, it just seems to be fairly generic Python three. Can we go back to something for a second here? What was the reason that we didn't want to just provide a container? Well, I'm I'm doing it that if you want a container, if you've got Docker installed, you can do it on Docker. If you want to install it locally, you can install it locally. So I'm just giving you both options, but I'm expecting most people will use a container. If you don't want to put Docker on, I mean, the problem is now that Docker's paid for on Mac. No, 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 no. Why not? But why not Podman? Because Pod won't allow you to do volume mounts on Mac and Windows, so you'd have to fire. Oh, they right on Mac and Windows they don't yet. Yeah, but yet. Um, however, we could do a container that you. Hmm, let's so, see. Yeah, this is. I mean, there's something. This is I environment mean, you, you're going to be working within. So. If you have your editors on editor on window, your IDE on window, you want to be able to build and and, and test the site using that editor. So you've got to be able to mount the volume within the container. I'm trying to I did look at doing the the clone within the container, but then it's a pain to actually go and change the content. Yeah. yeah. I mean you could use you could do it on a per page basis. By piping in the file to the container, but that'd be messy. Well, to do an empty docs, you've got to point it out the source tree. All right. Well, let's let's not spend any much. Let's yeah. not spend more time on this now. Um, it sounds like minimal is good. I agree with Diane that let's let's push this off to a future meeting, and just, let's just stick with your generalized stuff for now. Because right. right now we need to get the site over just yep, yep. over. All oh, right. I so. mean, the, 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 these don't need to be done. These aren't, these aren't blocking the migration. These are things that are more doc, more general documentation issues that that we have to do. Um, this is the more tricky one. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm I'm feeling a bit like the the, the community police at the minute. Um, Let's see. So, what yeah, the, the social media pres presence there? Sorry. Uh, let's this go. Is a, this is the one with the social media, yeah. So what they want to do is they want to actually put a social media panel in. Um, and, and what they've done is they've, if I, if I want to show you again the source. What they've done is they've actually gone and modified the site CSS to create their own their own sort of CSS tags and content. Um, and then they've put a bunch of HTML at the top of their page. Um, and again, one of the design principles was get rid of all HTML so everything is marked down within the site. 
Yeah. So, so, I, so, so maybe what we should do is invite them to come to the um, docs meeting, the next one, and say, um, and just put a con, con, I mean, adding a section to the page is not a, not a bad thing. It's more like um, they, they need to do it within the context of make docs as opposed to adding HTML is, is our, is, is the rule I think that we've, we're trying well, I think to that's do. the question. I think that's the question Brian is asking is, yeah. you know, like, is that what we're saying? Are we saying that we want folks to stick to what we have available yeah. for now, unless it's applicable across sites and doesn't break things? Is yeah. that what we all agree on? Yeah, I think, I think that's what I would. And if they do it for their sub page, they should come back and maybe do it for the the overall landing page too. You know, in a way that doesn't break it. Bruce, you wanted to say something. Oh, and on, um, like if we're uh, okay. So what are we comparing with? We're comparing with the old OKD site, uh, which was not terribly friendly to for outsiders to edit. Yeah, um, terribly not. And so we're this version anyway, uh, trying this particular technology. <clears throat> and presumably we would have, we, we have something in the doc, <coughs> excuse me, documentation that says, this is sort of the design framework for the site so that we could point them to if somebody's coming with a completely different, you know, HTML based flavor, uh, then, you know, I, I would think that the thing to do would be to uh, reject the request, point them to the design, or at least continue the discussion. Uh, otherwise, you get a big hodgepodge where, yeah. uh, you know, maybe, maybe part of it is using uh, Ruby on Rails and part of it's using React and, uh, oh, why not JSF? And it, it's a big disaster. Brian, would you be into writing something along those lines that lays out, like, this is our philosophy for right now? And basically, well, just reiterate we discuss what we discussed, and put that as a note, maybe in the the in that section there for the um, the right the uh, right modifying OKD.io. Can you put so, something in there that says? So if you look there, this is effectively the changing content. These are the the markdown features that I've sort of said that exist. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that this is a set of features that you use. So if you want to create a tab, you can create a tab. If sure. You create... what, I, what I mean is something that explicitly says, hey, there's boundaries. I mean, I, yeah. I, and I totally appreciate what you did. What I'm saying is, is I think yeah. we need yeah. to have something that clearly states there are boundaries and yeah. they encompass this here. I'm, right. I, now, if I'm coming from a conciliatory hat, okay, because yeah. uh, I just gave you my authoritarian hat, uh, the conciliatory hat would say that uh, uh, it, for the cube people, uh, we actually want to pull them in. Uh, so we want to uh, work with them to make this transition. And certainly some of them can uh, get their backs up, uh, you know, at least as, as well as I can. Uh, we'd like to avoid that. Yeah, and, 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 and this is really why I'm, I'm asking this question, Fox. because... It's... I, this is this is what I this is the way the diplomatic way that I would would try and frame it and I will reach out to Sandro because I think he's a red hatter um, yes. I'm yes. pretty yes. sure he is is that um, if he w what he's doing what he's asking for is to add some oh, it looks like a little social media pizzazz to the the landing page um, if rather than doing it just for the overt page um, or the cube cubevert OKD, whatever, we, I forget the name of the page, but anyways, that page, if he would come to the docs group and talk about, um, see if we can figure out how to do it within the context of make docs rather than HTML. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 and that's what I suggested, that if we're going to do that, let's make it a template, which is how I've done the home page. So if you look, notice the home page formatting is a little bit different because we, we, we've got the, mm -hmm. the things there. But the source is still pure. Yeah. 
So, maybe do maybe do it in two steps, right? So reach out to them and continue on the path of trying to integrate it across the site in a way that that doesn't break things. And at the same time, write something out for future because we have other working groups coming online and we yeah. need to solidify this as 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 process. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just didn't really know. I, I, we don't really have a, a way of any of this written down. So I, I just, yeah, this was just really, what is our approach to this? And then the second one is, um, obviously, the last working group, the main working group, we, we had a conversation about, should we actually have social media accounts? And that was the second part of this is, I, 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 accepting the, the pull request, am I meant to be validating that what they put in is in line with agreements in the the main working group, or is that not what the role of who of, of the documentation, whoever accepts the pull request? Because again, I was a little bit unsure of that because we sort of said that we didn't want social media, and yet this pull request is adding a subgroup, not even OKD social media, it's a subgroup social media accounts, Twitter and things. So I, I didn't know whether that was an issue or not. And when we accept a document pull request, are we also vetting the content in terms of it, its agreed content through a working group or? Well, and I think that that's a great question. So reframing the question in a way that's that's more pointed, do how do we want to handle subgroups creating their own social media or wanting to provide their own social media? Uh, uh, modes, right? Yeah. How does this group want to handle that? Well, I, I think first they they need one. I really want them to come to this meeting to talk about it with us, as opposed to us putting an edict down on it. Um, and we have not and raise it to the, a higher level because we don't even have an OKD Twitter handle. Um, so have the conversation be about OKD social media presence, and then the sub working groups. And so I'd like to get, um just pinging Sandro and he's not on, I think he's in Italy, so I- He is in Italy, yeah. Yeah, he's not um, not responding here. But I'd rather, rather than have them go off and create their own thing and then have to rein it back in or edit it after they've built up some sort of a following, whatever, um, I'd like to have a bigger conversation about whether or not we should have um, an OKD, um, sub presence and how we're going to manage that um, and and who is going to manage that because um, as I said it at one of the last meetings I think the last um, main group meeting um, it I, I already manage um, OpenShift Commons and have a, um, access to OpenShift as Twitter handles to get stuff retweeted on and I've never um, um, opened up the, the can of worms of managing yet another Twitter handle it may be time um, to, to do that. So I, I'm, I'm not adverse to it, but I'd like to have that as a bigger conversation about how we resource managing it, who has access to it and that. And then um, if there, if we can do something with the overt stuff, then Groovy, um, oh, I keep saying overt, so I probably shouldn't be it. But the virtual, the OKD virtualization. Q-Vert. Hubert stuff. Um, I'm stuck on over it this morning. Apologies to everybody. Um, rather than us giving them an edict saying no or whatever, but I, I, what I want to get them is more involved in the OKD working group discussion of social media and how we should do outreach. Because, um, you know, uh, Jamie and uh, the other chairs and everybody should have access to that Twitter handle, but maybe we have a social media manager for the community. Um, that that just does promotions and stuff and and books that and you know. All and right. That, so you're gonna you're gonna give them an, an official. I had already invited them, but if you give them another invite to this meeting, that would be great, and then we can go from there. Yeah. So so once that's resolved, I say we have a pull request to actually pull their their site in, which is the other link in in this subgroup web content session. So that is the pull request, but. It, at the minute, it actually does break the page, but um, it, we also have the questions of social media and and adding it correctly. So 
that's that one. Um, yeah, so that's Vita side. So as soon as I, I get an official sort of comment that, yeah, the webhooks are important, I can actually start doing the the changes and um, yeah. yeah, hopefully it'll take only sort of half an hour to, to get everything sorted and switched it, over. It should be. And so I'm just asking, yeah, so I'm going to go on. I'm on one phone, one here and here and over there. I'm just going to ask Jerry to double check and look at that issue today, and hopefully we can get that done today. Brilliant. All right, uh, let's move on here. We're about halfway through the meeting. Uh, name and scope of install uh, in README, uh, we agreed that it needs to be done. Reworking will begin after the beta site goes to prod. Lots of stuff here is uh, beta site goes to prod. Uh, inclusive okay. language, same thing. Just an update uh, there. I've actually yeah. put most of the install and README stuff already into the site. We just okay. really need to verify that it's good and then change what's in the OKD repo. Right. Vadim was Vadim wanted to make sure that that, that that stuff didn't change in the repo until the other stuff was actually public and at the yeah. at the main URL. So okay, yeah. cool. Uh, bu, 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 bu. inclusive language, that's gonna be addressed. And then we're gonna do a a regular, maybe we'll do like a quarterly check-in or something like that, just to make sure that anything. Uh, it, it, if um, you want to, we can, add, is, uh, we can add that to the automation. Yeah, if you could, that would be awesome if you could do that. We, we, could, we could add that to the automation if you want to block publishing based on that. I can look into that. Uh, Brian, would this be something that once you've added it to the automation that you can put this? So we, we need a document that basically says this is what is in there, this is what's set up so that, you know, if, if you need to share tasks or you need to hand it off at some point or anything, that we know what is in there and how it works and whatnot. Yeah, okay. I mean, the, the, it is sort of outlined in the in the beta side, but yeah, I, I can actually be more, more explicit, yeah. That would be awesome. Uh, ta -ta -ta, upgrade path notations. Uh, Vadim was talking about upgrade stuff and, and upgrade path. He came up with a 4.7 to 4.8, but it's unclear. There's some issues that people are having with it. So I think we'll shelve that until we get some clarity from uh, from Vadim. Is that okay, yeah, it's, Bruce? It's only, it's only from one particular 4.7. Ah, uh, uh, and that's so, tricky. So right? you have to, you do like so a you, you have to, uh, so like I've got I've got a my production 4.7 is running an older version, uh, so I and I did actually upgrade my test one because the 4.7 September something or other uh, actually successfully upgraded the previous older versions, and that's the one that will successfully upgrade to 4.8. So it's a little bit of a minefield, but it's it's all documented in the uh, you know the sort of release website. If you actually, well, you know, if you if you look sort of behind the initial link into the uh, footnotes, as it were, um, and, and of course, if you if you get there, then you have the wrong uh, Kubernetes version. But uh, right. uh, who knows how Vidim is going to handle that? I mean, it, it works. Yeah. It works fine so far. But uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of usage on my test cluster. Yeah. I, I'm mainly just trying to install things and do upgrades and things with it. So, well, so I there, think once Vadim gets a little bit of clarity on where things are going, by the way, I don't know if anyone saw that um, Christian added some comments to a couple of those tickets in, in conversation with other folks has pointed out that they're going to try to pull OKD back into the OpenShift repo uh, and out of uh, Vadim's like private repo. Uh, so I think that's going to change things a little bit in terms of, um, like it's, it's going to change things a little bit. So we'll, I think we'll have to shelve this until we get more clarity from the Dean and we see sort of where things are going in terms of resources. Uh, I accidentally glossed over a create docs process document. So everyone has signed off on Michael's document. Does someone want to add that into, uh, the beta site? A repository as a page. Oh, is it? Great. All right, so that's done. Excellent.
Very cool. You've been doing some great work, Brian. Thank you so much. And thank you, Michael, as well. This is all. Okay, so that's done. Uh, da, 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 da. Great path, docs. Okay. Um, next OKD office hour. We need to do some promotion for this because it's like uh, next week and we haven't really posted anything about it. Diane, is there an official page there, somewhere? Yeah, there is a landing page. I will grab. Um, I will grab it and throw it in the chat. Um, and it is listed. Um, and the powers that be at Red Hat are promoting our presence at, at KubeCon. So it will get promoted as part of that slipstream. Probably we should add a um, send a note to the OKD um, Google group. And that would be uh, su personally sufficient marketing from our part, point of view. Um, Putting in the Kubernetes user Slack channel as well. That's what I was going to say as well, and in the dev, because there's still people that are in the dev that are just chilling and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. So I think, that, and then I can put one in my Slack channel for OpenShift Commons as well. But yeah, I'm just grabbing the landing page. Hang on a second, I will find it. And I also tend to spam the uh, OpenShift in Facebook, the OpenShift users, and you can post it up there, and people actually respond. So. Google. All right, well, while she's doing that, um, code of conduct, there's an issue there for uh, code of conduct that Diane created and Michael is added to, or going to be added to. And uh, this is basically a Ansible code of conduct page, uh, lift it and shift it. Uh, into our code of conduct. Yeah. So let's look this over and then at the next meeting, like agree to it. I don't want to lift and shift until yeah. people have actually read it in this group. So, yeah. and so what, what I'm hoping, and this is why I'm, I'm really thrilled that Michael Burke is here, is if you look where the Ansible folks tucked it, they tucked it right into the docs. Um, and I know OpenShift doesn't have that in the docs right now for like, docs.openshift.com or whatever the site is, and we don't have it there. But I wouldn't, I would really like to have it live in the docs because then it not only will, and then link to it from the site that Brian has created, which means that um, the cut and paste and um, search and replace for Ansible and tweaks that we want to make would be um, moved into the docs and it would be maintained over time. and partially because I know the Ansible folks got their stuff all nicely reviewed by Red Hat Legal and um, and and I kind of like their their code of conduct. I know other people have other opinions about codes of conduct and, and that sort of stuff too. So um, but I wanted to get it out there and and see if Michael if that was okay with you to to move it there. And that way then Brian basically all you have to do is is link to it. And if if legal or Red Hat or the community decides to change it, they change it in the docs with the help from Michael Burke um, and the Red Hat docs team that man manages that. I think that way it will live on a lot longer and get a lot more readership than the landing page itself. Um, and that's just my opinion. So I'll stop talking and, and, and hopefully everybody will read this issue and the link and see if there's any objection. Okay, so be prepared at the next meeting to provide feedback on this. One thing I would suggest is that we actually use this as, I like, in other words, I like what um, uh, CNCF does for all of their like streams, uh, event streams, and even their meeting streams and stuff, is they actually say, this is a, a CNCF um, event, and as such, it falls under our code mm -hmm. of conduct and they might link to it or whatever. And I, I would be totally fine if we did that at the beginning of all of our meetings. Yeah. You know, I, just so and people know it's out there. Yeah. yeah, one of the things that, and I'm on a bunch of CNCF things they have is at the beginning of every meeting, and it might be a meeting etiquette thing that we do, um, we don't tend to use slides or anything, um, visuals, but they have one slide that they open the meeting with that it says what the meeting is, what the date is, and then the next slide is usually, at least most of the meetings that I go to, is a link with a blurb about the code of conduct. 
and then they go into that. So on every recording, you have that as well. Um, there is sort of the opening act for every meeting. That actually leads me to a question. Um, do Are we free to use the little mascot in our slides like for the intro to the videos. I mean, no offense to, to what you did with the gray and red thing a couple of years ago, but and Megan. <laughs> you know, it's it would be nice to have like a white frame oh, yeah. with the mascot and then the text for the meeting at the beginning of each one. Oh, and I'd be happy to create to create that in my video software if I can get a copy of the mascot graphic. The graphics so, are all in um in the repo somewhere in some image file and if not i will send you and um, upload they should all of so them, in the like, okd.io repo yeah yeah they are because they're they're on the home page oh yeah. yeah that's true yeah, yeah. so all right. yeah they're, they're, they're all in the open um all joseph right. myers did a rework of them at one point another guy inside of red hat did one that that panda has been tweaked not as much as the github octo octo cat but um, it, it should be, um, and I think we should all have our own variations. People keep sending me stickers with different panda-like things with OpenShift logos incorporated in them that they've done for their local meetups and things. So feel free to um, dance away with that and um, use it as you wish. Yeah, my graphic skills, I keep saying this to people, are from MS Paint. Um, so I have no, um, I'm very Buddhist about my attachment to the website, as you found out, Brian, and to any graphical thing, so. All right, so I will add that to the beginning of the video, uh, and I'll create a new, like, flash screen at the beginning, and it'll feature the date and stuff like that, and also the link to the code of conduct. Uh, next up is, or is there anything else on that topic before we move on? Yeah. Code of conduct? Should I, for the meeting meeting next week, should I create a gist with lift and shift the, the, the so that we could make edits to it? Um, or uh, You could do a gist or you could do a, a hackmd.io, like just like the, yeah. that we had from the answer right. in, so. Yeah, so that we, as people are talking about it, we can make notations on it so it's sure. not all. Uh, I would suggest that meetings are not, uh, slice and dice meetings, during meetings, text slice and dice can sometimes be not the best. So if folks maybe maybe we have this discussion over the working group email list. Okay. Uh, that might be better instead of like taking up the whole hour, like sort of should this go there? Should the, you know what I mean? Like that could be. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. No, uh, I'll, I'll refrain from that for now, and then we'll see see how everybody on this group's review of it goes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. there's only if uh, I mean if you replace OKD the word Ansible with OKD and not OpenShift. Um, I think we will be um, pretty close to going there, but then I just want to make sure that everybody's on board with the content, you know, um, and having that there and. Excellent. Everybody has an opinion about them. Yes. Uh, okay, this next one is directed at Michael. There was an issue. Does anyone know where this issue is? Someone commented. And I'm not. I'm doing a search, and I'm not finding it. It was either an issue or a discussion item that there are 4.9 references now in the OKD docs because it just copied everything over. And obviously, we're not even to so four. We're we're just rolling out 4.8. So what can we do to address that? Can it be addressed? I guess we'll have to stop pointing to Matt to our main branch. I The main branch is going to have four nine references in it because we're documenting yeah. four nine right now. Yeah. Is that troublesome to point to four eight? Uh, technically, no. Okay. I never did quite understand why we point. We're not pointing to a specific version. We're pointing to main. I never did yeah. quite understand the reason behind that. Uh, can we start pointing to the individual versions? We talked before about pruning Yeah, we out talked about that. Um, yeah. yeah. I meant to talk with my DPM, my project manager, last night, but I didn't get a chance to. I will, I will get in touch with him today. 
Okay. If you could just, if we could go to her release uh, and and not do latest anymore, that would probably like solve this. Just not have it be latest. Just be people will assume that the last number in the pull down is the latest, right? The latest, so, yeah. Yeah. And so if we could do four eight to what did we say we wanted three eleven to four eight? That was three six. Three six. The okay. three eleven and four. Four five. Yeah. Four eight. Thank. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I wrote down somewhere. I'm looking at the other day. All right, and once we find that issue, we'll point it to you. Uh, okay. Point you to it. Point it to you. Point you to it. Got it. And um, so, what are the next steps? Next on the list is Twitter and Facebook. We sort of decided, I think, to wait on Facebook, but we did decide that we wanted to have stuff sent out through the OpenShift Twitter. Diane, do you have that as a task uh, to do? Um, did you create a task in GitHub for me, uh, or did, is this just a task? No, I'll create one in in, uh, in the repo for you. That way, you've got. Let's try to do that for all of our tasks moving forward. The Fedora Core S folks do this, and it actually is really good. If you create an issue, um, and we might be able to even get Vadim to add a a tag or a type, whatever those those types that is like task or something like that. Um, and then anytime we have a task for someone, we just put that in there and then um, include their name in it in the content or something like that. Um, and for folks that didn't catch this at the main meeting, uh, I am gonna start doing a task list. And what that task list will do then was just link to these individual issues in the repo that explain what it is that people are supposed to be doing. Because we're getting to the point where we're getting big enough where we have to actually like be accountable to each other and stuff like that, so. And is it, is it worthwhile using a, a board or something, putting ZenHub on top of a Git repo and actually having sort of a, a proper board? You mean like Trello or, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know. I don't know, do we want to add that layer of of it's it's just it, it's then an online place that you yeah. get a an immediate glance and if you say oh I know that I, I agreed to something at the meeting but I have no idea what it was you've got somewhere to go look <laughs> <laughs> not that that's ever happened to all of us <laughs> right <laughs> uh, I don't know what do folks think about it? Well, it's it's just like tr Trello is Trello is good, but it's also proprietary. Could be anyone, uh, any 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 so, type of. Yeah, no. I, in, in principle, I, I sort of prefer things that are sort of open source enough that you can install them locally on whatever your cluster is. Sure. Um, but uh, Trello, Trello is very a, popular. I mean, and, sure. But and I mean, I think, anyone. Does does the idea in general yeah. sound good? Uh, yeah. No. The the idea I think is a potentially good idea. Um, and uh, you know, so, in terms of the specifics, uh, I'm relatively open to that. Uh, like I've tried all these things over the years. Well, what's a good one that's open? Uh, the the couple of times that I've looked, I haven't actually found one. Okay, uh, that 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 doesn't. I mean, it's been a year since I've looked. Uh, so you're so talking about a, a like a, a Trello like thing. Sure, sure, why not? Okay. Uh, it's been on my mind, but at a very low level. So give me a task on that. Uh, and I will look for it in the board. <laughs> so the uh, anyway, I'll, I'll see if I can uh, find something and I'll, I'll sort of bring it to the next meeting. I mean, there are solutions that get built on top of Git. I'm, I'm just wondering like a Git, the Git project or because again, that means we don't have to host anything. <laughs> well, right, and, and uh, a lot of the stuff that's on, like, so Git is proprietary as well. You know, Microsoft owned last I looked. Uh, GitLab is uh, a bit more flexible, but they're apparently looking at an IPO that seems to be going public. Um, but uh, sure, I mean, I, I would look in those places 
preferentially, I guess. And if you have any, if you have any suggestions, just uh, you know, pass them on to me. You're doing my work, so I can't complain about that. All right, I'm actually starting the task list at the bottom of this meeting thing. If folks want to help me add items to it so that we actually have, this, that would be. Browser's moving. Right. So, what so else the, do we've got? The other thing that I, that suggestion that you made at the last meeting that I think might make sense is um, to d discuss is whether we call this group the docs group or the communications group um, so that we could cover more than just documentation, but the out, you know, maybe documentation and outreach. Um, and would be um, so that people would get a better sense and maybe we could get more of a center of gravity for the social media and outreach and marketing of things. I like it. Yeah. Does anyone, have, is anyone happy with that or is there another name that would be better? Because um, I think when you just say docs, not no offense, Michael, you, we just get the docs.okd.io folks and not the um, Twitter handle wannabes. Um, and which is all good, um, but, and and if we need to break them out into two separate subgroups like OKD mar marketing um, or outreach or whatever, we can do that as well later. But I think we need to keep it all in one to start with, and then and I've just pinged Sandro and other folks to see if we can get them to come here and do that. And I think by calling it outreach, they'll get the get the idea. I'm not sure if that's a task or or not, but yeah, I think it's it's a task. So add more tasks here. I'm sure there's one you picked up, Tom, but I can't remember what it is. I'm sure there is too, so I, there will be. Um, and I have lost the link to the HackMD thing. Can you throw the HackMD URL back into the chat? I've got too many windows. All right, and that was changing the versioning. That's Michael. Oh, Twitter, Twitter. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's for me, I mean, I, the lesson that I've learned over the years is that um, creating a Twitter handle is wonderful and easy. Um, managing it and um, keeping it alive and feeding it is um, is, is a um, resource heavy thing. So, um, yeah, and I think that's, we had a little, a little discussion with the, the Kubevert folks and Oh, uh, Diane, uh, re-inviting uh, the Qvert folks uh, to this meeting. Yep, I yep, just did that too. So yep, well, but just making sure they show up is probably the other thing. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, all right. We did I that. I think that's that's everything. Uh, any last minute stuff that we need to talk about? Oh, Diane, did you put that link? You put that link in the the chat for the event, right? 
for no thank you i knew there was something else i was looking for hang on a sec and i will find it and let's see, veronica has that Two seconds. In the chat, pretty sure this is it. It's just taking a bit of time to resolve, and there should be an virtual booth office hours section. And the OKD one is there, and yeah, it doesn't have much more. And the office hours link is here. Well, if you could, if that's getting promoted on like the OpenShift Twitter, then we could then forward that tweet to our respective social medias and stuff like that. And yep. I'll post it into the OpenShift users Facebook group, and then folks could share that out via their okay. respective so, social media as well. I'm going to tweet that now from OpenShift Commons and from python dj and share you can see if you go to twitter um let me just open your comments first i'll do it for myself and that that it'll be out there just shortly and you'll be able to see that excellent all right, is there anything else that we need to cover before we break for uh, the day? Everyone have what they need, need to do their tasks? Well, this was a very productive meeting and uh, it's amazing that this little group gets so much done actually. Appreciate everyone's hard work. Totally awesome. do. And we should probably focus, we mentioned this at the last meeting, but we should also focus on trying to recruit more people to show up so that we can distribute uh, and get even more done. Give people a little bit less to do so that they have lives and stuff. Like that. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. We're actually ending a couple minutes early and uh, I'll check in, I'll send something out over the mailing list, checking in on people's tasks and pointing you to the actual Get uh, issues that I'll create, or get, I don't know, I'll talk to Vadim about which way to do this, um, but they might be discussion items that have a special, like, task uh, category or something like that. Awesome. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you.